Today, I'm going to talk about lean intelligence, use of artificial intelligence to revolutionize the investment research process. I'm going to start off with a brief introduction of my firm. We are the US asset management arm of Tokyo Marine, Japan's oldest and largest non-life insurance company. We manage about 56 billion US dollar in AUM globally, and we are proud of our ability to provide a wide range of product offering to our clients. We are the practitioner of lean intelligence, where we leverage artificial intelligence to manage both discretionary and systematic strategy with a small research team. Here's an example from our discretionary catastrophe bond fund. We use lever impact data to monitor disaster globally on a real-time basis. We keep track of the progress of a disaster, in this case, Hurricane Harvey. And we look at the different attribution of different disaster and compare, make a comparison between them. And finally, we apply our own natural language processing on top of lever impact data to keep track of reported loss estimate. We call this cat bomb ibis. So how did we get here? We actually pass on the previous wave of artificial intelligence, which is high frequency trading due to its arms race like nature, characterized by high upfront investment. As we can see from those news articles, a good performance alone is not sufficient for a profitable business. We start exploring big data and AI two years ago, and we found how much the off-the-shelf solutions are available and accessible to make a huge difference in how people conduct investment research. Therefore, this presentation is really about rethinking investment research productivity with big data and AI. Asset managers' costs uh, can be categorized into two categories, market costs and operational costs. People usually think about market costs, such as commissions and market impacts when thinking about performance. However, having edges in that alone is not sufficient as we have seen with high frequency trading. Another piece of the puzzle, operational cost involves the R&D cost for development of investment strategy and post-trade cost for execution of strategies. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on a less discussed topic, R&D cost. So let's first take a look at the R&D cost from different investment strategy perspective. First, discretionary strategies. It is going to be expensive when we deploy our own analysis resources to collect information manually. So we all do some degree of information outsourcing. For example, reading sell-side analysis reports. More outsourcing we conduct, which is going to the right side of the spectrum, the information become less proprietary, less exclusive, less targeted, but the quantity become more available, and there's a potential to be most cost efficient, and inevitably it become more general, so that requires some work to transform those information to something useful for a particular investment theme. On the other hand, for systematic strategies, purchasing separate data sets and normalizing and reconciling them can be a highly expensive process. And the single purposeness of data sets and their high touch data correction process are going to make those data sets expensive. 
This is why we like news data. News data are generated by reporters, and to a large extent, it is already commoditized. News data also have a high degree of convenience. For example, we can easily find uh, Toyota sales information, sales performance through news. But it is a lot harder to get the same information from, let's say, credit card data due to its sector bias. So news analytics tool, such as Rampack, is currently available to deliver news data in a normalized and timely manner. Use of news data for investment research is becoming more mainstream today. From the history of the finance academic literature, researchers initially used pricing data, then fundamental data. And now it became increasingly popular recently to use news data to explain the unexplained risk and return of financial markets. So let's take a look at an example of applying news data on investment research problem. People generally look for what's there. But information about what's not there is actually very powerful as well. So those information, information about no information is very powerful. At the same time, it is expensive. Harnessing the wisdom of um, fundamental managers, there's a notable value investor saying that you have a higher probability of being on the right side of the trade in a small and micro cap stocks and in boring stocks with low analyst coverage. Here, the boring stocks are defined as those stocks with low analyst coverage, and we're going to use this definition in this presentation. So analyst coverage itself is a widely used property of stocks in academic literatures. And academic researchers have done a lot of interesting research about uh, analyst coverage. And IBIS is a popular data set people use to extract the uh, analyst rating information. And Merton's investor recognition hypothesis is rather uh, well-known, and our interpretation of it is since we rely on sales and analysts to put together uh, nice information for us to consume, therefore, if we want to invest in those stocks that are not covered by the sales and analyst, it is naturally going to increase the cost of conducting the research. Therefore, the boring stock premium may just compensate for the extra effort and time that involved in conducting the R&D process. <coughs> so um, let's do an experiment. We construct a boring factor, BMP, boring minus popular. So from a French like five times five subportfolio are constructed based on number of news count about analyst rating using relevant back data. We group them into five quantiles. And another dimension is we use market cap to group into quantile as well. And each sub portfolios are value weighted and rebalanced on a quarterly basis. A long short BMP factor is constructed by purchasing the most boring sub-portfolios and shorting the most popular sub-portfolios. A benchmark IBIS factor is also constructed in a similar manner. So, so let's take a look at BMP's performance um, comparing with other common factors and IBIS. BMP generated the highest return with one of the lowest risk. The figure and the table below are looking at the portfolios at the quantiles um, based on the, uh, the news count perspective. Those are already aggregated from the market cap angle. 
as you can see, less news count will actually generate a better performance with less risk. Let's see if this phenomenon also exists across different size groups. Each of the five times five portfolios are shown here. And as you can see, those portfolios with, no, uh, with most news count generally come at the very bottom in comparison with their similar size peers. And here's an interesting um, observation is that uh, as suggested by the conventional wisdom, those stocks with, that are smallest and with the um, most boring stocks, they, their performance was the best uh, from the information ratio perspective. As you can imagine, those stocks have limited capacity. Therefore, even the richest investor should also care about lean intelligence. Limited capacity means the limited ability to spread out the R&D cost to returns. Therefore, it might be worse off when we take the R&D cost into consideration. If the, the cost to come up with this strategy is sufficiently expensive. Lean intelligence enables investors to have access to more investment opportunities. So let's take a look at the BMPs. If BMP add marginal values over common factors and IBIS using regression. Researchers have uh, suggested that the news data can provide, um, can explain unexplained risk and return of the financial market. Here is an example that uses the market and, and seven common factors as a baseline. And we constructed the alternative factor using UC data. Other events such as M&A, index additions, ESG can be other source of great um, event beta, but we're not going to get into the details here. If you look at the table and then the figure here, BMP, um, even as the more factors added into the equation, the BMP's idiosyncratic return diminishes, but BMP still managed to, to keep almost half of the idiosyncratic return after taking markets and seven common factors into consideration. After putting IBIS into the equation, IBIS is a majority of the BMP's idiosyncratic return due to its materially similar fundamentals. It's not shown here, but as you can imagine, BMP can explain major majority of IBIS idiosyncratic return beyond the common factors as well. So let's take a look at the economic reasoning behind low analyst coverages. Researchers have suggested things like um, investor recognition hypothesis. We're going to provide one of uh, additional economic reasoning that using relevant back data that might be interesting to you the serendipity effect. Serendipity means happy coincidence. When something is not there, it has the potential to occur. When some stocks are not currently actively covered by analysts, it has the potential to get the coverage in the futures. That's a binary change from zero to one. When analyst coverages are initiated, majority of analyst coverage are initiated positive, at least neutral. Positively initiated analyst coverage will cause the stock to search on the event date with a significant drift afterward. In comparison, negatively initiated coverage are not only rare, they also have a limited uh, post-event drift as well. This is why the low analyst coverage is attractive. So let's look at the 
comparison of BMP and IBIS from a uh, uh, different angle. So news count of the um, BMP move around the different across the quartiles much more frequently than the analyst count from IBIS. So why does it that matter? So when even a stock is covered by, let's say, all the analysts, but those coverage are not active enough to be further broadcasted through the news, are those stocks really interesting? A classical example is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola from IBIS has been one of the highest analyst coverage throughout history. But if we look at the BNP, which is Urban Pack's news data, their quartile moved more dramatically over time. Doesn't BNP capture the spirit of boring better? So conclusions. It is important to be able to deliver a small success, especially when you have a limited resources to start with. Find a data set that has a high degree of completeness, that you can deliver a small success that's visible to more people in your organization. I think that's very important. At the end of the day, the productivity gain is the only way to benefit both the businesses and the consumers. We are a big believer of Model T hedge funds. It is not a product of tomorrow, but it is ready to become the regime of today. Thank you for listening. I will take questions. Thank you. Thank you. We probably have time for two questions. We got two right there. Thank you. Thank you for the fantastic mm -hmm. presentation. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so first Oops. one is uh, the BMP construction. Is it just cross-sectional, or do you take time series relevance as well for individual stocks? It is just a cross-section. OK. Uh, the second question is, does this cross-sectional mm -hmm. factor, uh, how does it stand across the other standard factors? Like, uh, doesn't it look similar to low wall or low beta? Yes. So uh, we look at the BMP factors um, in comparison with low, you mentioned low volatility and low beta, right? And then, so the honest question, honest answer is that the, the correlation with low volatility is much lower than we thought. And then BMP factor was able to provide a marginal value beyond the tradition, the common factor like beta and low volatility. So that's what we found. So is it orthogonal? Uh, could styles? you repeat the question again? So is it orthogonal to those style performances? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On the back, yeah. Just mm -hmm. over there. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, hi. Really fascinating uh, result. I uh, just wanted to make sure I understood uh, about the, what you call your IBIS factor. Mm -hmm. Is that just stocks with a, a lot of analysts covering them versus no analysts? Is that what it is, or something else? So the IBIS factor, the construction of, of IBIS factor is very similar to how we construct the BNP factor, except the relevant packs news count is replaced by um, the NS count using the IBIS on the just a, like a detailed database. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. This is Raven Pack.